The various classes of diesel multiple units comprising the Wessex Trains fleet are all fitted with the BSI type automatic coupler manufactured by Begischer Stahl Industry. In this short program we'll look at the normal procedures for coupling and uncoupling units as well as some emergency procedures. Let's begin by looking at the BSI coupler in detail. At the top is the air connection block. In the centre of this block is a single main reservoir air connection with rubber seal. In the centre of the coupler head, and to its right, the gathering horn. When two couplers are engaged, it's the sprung-loaded coupler pin here, which engages the coupler pin in the opposite coupler and locks them together. The coupler pins are normally unlocked pneumatically by a piston in the coupler head. Air pressure is applied to this piston via an electro-pneumatic valve when the uncouple button is pressed. However, the coupler can be manually unlocked by pulling the uncoupling lever here at the left side of the coupler. We'll look at how to do this later in the program. At the bottom is the electrical connection block with its rotating cover, under which are 103 electrical connecting pins, 50 fixed and 53 sprung loaded. At each side of the coupler there are horizontal tommy bars for retracting the electrical connection block. They must be seated in the rubber housings. When making an attachment to another unit, stop six feet short and check that there is no non-multi label displayed. If there is, it means you can't couple to this unit for technical reasons. However, you may be required to couple to a non-multi unit in a failure situation to render assistance. In this case, get technical advice from control before you do anything else. If all is well, draw up and stop two feet short. Now leave the driving position and check both couplers. You may be able to do this from the open gangway door, if there is one. But if it's safe to do so, it's better to get down to ground level. Check that both electrical connection block covers are fully closed, show no sign of damage, and that the blocks are level with each other. Check that the uncoupling levers are in the normal position. Check that both couplers are central and correctly aligned with each other, both vertically and horizontally. Now return to the driving cab and ensure that all external doors are closed. Draw up and make gentle contact with the other unit, applying the brakes as soon as contact is made. Now take power as necessary in reverse to carry out the pull away test. This will ensure that the couplers have locked together mechanically. Move the direction selector to the neutral position and press the couple button on the driving desk for a minimum of 5 seconds. Now place the brake controller in the step 2 position and observe the brake cylinder gauge reading. Open the intermediate gangway door, if there is one. Go into the opposite cab and check that you have the same step 2 reading on the brake cylinder gauge there. Now you can return to your cab, shut down and secure in the normal way. Then switch off headlights, markers and cab lights. If you're attaching in a station platform, there'll be another driver present. He or she should assist in checking the alignment and condition of the couplers and check the brake cylinder gauge reading in the opposite cab. If the units pull apart when you carry out the pull away test, check the couplers and electrical connection blocks, making sure they are aligned before you try again. Make sure that both uncoupled levers are fully home. If the units still won't couple mechanically, try again from the other cab. 
Don't forget that standing on a curve can cause coupling problems. Try repositioning the units. Of course you may need the signaller's permission to do this. Finally, if all else fails, consider running one unit round. Of course you'll only be able to do this where the track layout allows. If the units couple mechanically, the pull-away test is satisfactory, but the electrical connection fails, you won't be able to release or apply the brakes on the other unit. Begin by checking the alignment of the electrical connection blocks. Are the covers fully clear? Can you see daylight between the blocks? If the electrical connection blocks are correctly connected, you'll have to try coupling from the opposite cab. If it still won't work, have a look at your fault-finding charts. Under brake applies or will not release. You may have an electrical fault on one of the units. Again, if all else fails, consider running one of the units round. When detaching from another unit, begin by ensuring that all external doors are closed. Then move the brake controller to step 3 and ensure that the main reservoir gauge is reading at least 6 bar. Now make sure that the direction selector is in the neutral position, then press the uncouple button for at least 5 seconds. Select reverse and move the unit back no more than two feet. Finally, check that the uncoupled levers have returned to the normal position and that the electrical connection block covers have fully closed. Set the head or tail lights on each unit as appropriate. A word of warning before we move on. Whenever the uncouple button is pressed, the units must be separated. This is imperative. If the units fail to part when carrying out the normal uncoupling procedure, you'll need to ease up to reduce the coupler tension. Place the brake controller in step 1, the direction selector in the forward position, take power, then release the brake. You should feel the unit push into the other unit. Now move the brake controller back to step 1 and shut off power. Press the uncouple button again for 5 seconds and move the units apart. If the units still won't uncouple, you'll need to get someone to help you with the emergency uncoupling rod. When the person assisting has located the end of the rod into the uncoupling lever, ease up. Now the uncoupling lever can be pulled back, releasing the couplers. You can move the units apart. If you're required to couple to a unit which has a known electrical fault, it'll be necessary to place both of the electrical connection blocks in the retracted position. To do this, it's necessary to unclip the two Tommy bars, one on each side of the coupler, and pull them down towards you until they are vertical. Be careful not to trap your fingers or thumb, particularly on the right hand bar. Once the electrical connection block is retracted, the units can be coupled mechanically without the danger that the electrical fault will be passed to the good unit. When coupling has taken place, you should be able to see daylight between the adjacent electrical connection blocks. Don't press the couple button when you return to the cab. In this condition, your train may only run at a maximum of 5 miles per hour to clear the main line. When you need to uncouple the defective unit, you'll have to use the emergency uncoupling rod because both electrical connection blocks are in the retracted position, both uncoupling levers are obstructed by the now vertical Tommy bars. The solution to this problem is to reset one electrical connection block by pushing the Tommy bar back to the horizontal position.
If your train requires assistance from a locomotive, a special emergency coupling adapter will be required. These adapters are not carried on our units, so will be brought to the failure location by fitters. At one end of the emergency coupling adapter is a standard BSI type coupler head which will engage with the BSI coupler on your train. At the other end is a draw hook attachment with securing pins. This attachment is located over the locomotive draw hook and the pins inserted to lock the coupling. In order to supply air to your failed train, the emergency air hose is inserted into the Schrader valve socket on your unit, while the other end has a standard 3 quarter inch main reservoir pipe connection with star valve. This end is connected to the locomotive air supply. Once connected, don't forget to open the emergency air valve on your train. In this condition, your train may only run at a maximum of 5 miles per hour to clear the main line. In the final part of this program, we'll look at some of the coupler defects to watch out for. These are the most likely causes of problems when coupling or uncoupling two units. As we saw earlier, the air connection has a rubber seal. If this seal is damaged or missing, a main reservoir air leak will occur if you couple to another unit. If any part of the coupler head or coupler pin mechanism is damaged or deformed, it may be impossible to couple or, worse still, the couplers may part in service. If the electrical connection block cover is damaged or fails to close fully, or has a defective weather seal, electrical defects may occur on the train's control circuits. If the electrical connection block itself is damaged, misaligned or partially retracted, it will be impossible to achieve a proper attachment of two units. Finally, in snow or severe weather conditions, Wessex Control will issue an adverse weather warning. Drivers at remote locations must make sure that exposed couplers are protected by the weatherproof bags provided. This program is intended to highlight the various coupling and uncoupling procedures for Wessex trains. For more detailed information, you should consult the written publications or seek the advice of your driver manager.